the one thing I make every holiday are these amazing red velvet crinkle cookies. I did not grow up baking Christmas cookies, so a few years ago I decided that it was time to start my own tradition. I looked around for something that I felt would be great to share with friends and families and colleagues and stumbled across red velvet crinkle cookies. They're just so holiday-y, is that a word? <laughs> They're bright red, super colorful, and have these beautiful crackled sugary tops on them that make them look like snow. So the first thing you do is mix together all your dry ingredients. We have flour, some unsweetened cocoa powder, that's what's gonna give this the flavor, baking powder, and a little bit of salt. Just give that a quick whisk. Make sure everything is evenly distributed throughout. Next, you cream together your butter and sugar. We have some salted butter. Drop that in there that's been softened. And then some sugar. I always start this on low so you don't get sugar flying everywhere as you get started. Once it gets a little bit incorporated into the butter, then you can speed it up to get that like really perfect light fluffy texture. And next up, you add the rest of the wet ingredients. So we're gonna put this back on low. Start with our eggs. Do them one at a time. It's incorporated, we add some vanilla. And finally, the thing that makes these the red velvet crinkle cookies is a little bit of red food coloring. You could either use gel or you can use the liquid red food coloring and just add enough until you're kind of happy with the color. You can go brighter, you can go a little lighter depending on what you like. That's looking pretty good. All right, this is when we start adding some of the flour. It's gonna get a little messy. So I try to do it slowly, a little bit at a time, again, so you're not getting flour all over your kitchen as you're doing your holiday baking and cooking. Okay, so this is an important part, and this is the mistake I made the first time I tried this recipe, is not letting the dough chill. So we have to stick this in the fridge for at least two hours so that it can get firm. You don't want it to be too gloppy because you want to be able to roll these into nice little small balls. It's been about two hours. I have my dough ready from out of the fridge and you can see that it's firm, not gloppy anymore, which means it's easy to work with without turning your hands into like a Halloween nightmare mess. I also have some sifted powdered sugar that we're going to roll these little balls into and once they bake and expand, that's how you're gonna get those like powdered sugar snow caps. So I take a little tablespoon and just roll up about a tablespoon worth of this dough, get a little ball and roll them. Be generous with the powdered sugar. One year I ran out and I was a little stingy and they just did not have the same effect. All right, dust that off and just drop them off. They don't spread a ton, but they do need a little bit of space. So I usually get about like 12 onto a tray. So that's it, just keep on rolling until you make it through all of this dough. It's a little bit of work, but I promise you they are worth it. So now that we have our first batch ready, we're gonna pop it in the oven 350 for about 10 to 12 minutes. 